Dear friends, welcome to my home in Cremona. I wish we could be all together. Hopefully, this will be the very last virtual conference held by Amos. Let me share with you in this way a history that has to do with um, my institution, the Musicology and Cultural Heritage Department of Pavia University, which is actually in Cremona. Our university was founded in 1361, so we just celebrated our 660 uh, birthday. And you can see the facade of the palace in uh, Pavia, uh, renovated by our second founder, Maria Teresa d'Austria. But today I'm talking about the only musicology department that is in Cremona, hosted in this wonderful palace built in 1495 by the power noble family Raimondi. Uh, it hosted three institutions, the Stauffer Foundation, the Violin Making School and our department. In the year 2000, the Violin Making School um, moved to another location, so we underwent a mm, substantial renovation with uh, the addition of classrooms and the uh, opportunity to use the noble and antique part of the building as a music instrument gallery. Every time I enter my job uh, place, I read uh, on the facade a motto that could be very useful also during these pandemic and difficult times. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. In 2005, our university started a museal system uh, with five museums and several collections. Uh, you can imagine being so ancient, we gain a lot of uh, objects and a lot of history. For instance, Volta, the inventor of the battery, was a professor um, at Pavia. Golgi, uh, the guy who discovered how cells are made and are functioning, was also a colleague, a former colleague of mine. And uh, this is the last edition of our museum system, the uh, Natural History Museum in Pavia. So whenever you can travel, come and visit us because it's really a new um, setting in this kind of museum. Um, but um, I want to focus on the collection of musical instruments. Uh, you see a bunch of photos. Um, the collection is mostly made of three um, important components. Some early keyboards, some uh, copies of uh, Renaissance and uh, Baroque instruments that were made in the 1970s and 1980s and were donated by a former uh, student of the faculty. And uh, one of the widest collections of piano rolls and automatic instruments in Italy, uh, we have now about 7,000 piano rolls, uh, mostly from the uh, Cremonese uh, factory first, Fabbrica Italiana Rulli Sonori Traforati. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, Vice Chancellor of our, of our university uh, inaugurating the, the new galleries in 2016. Since then, we got a lot of uh, donations. And the most important one was um, a donation of 13 harmoniums and reed organs and other historical keyboards. And I think it's quite representative that these two guys, the Vice Chancellor of Pavia University and the Mayor of Cremona, are unveiling our, con our collection, just uh, discovering a Peter Titz Fisharmonica. So, what to do with all these new instruments? We invented the PH-19, uh, which is not a very acid um, program, but is an acronym for the Harmonium Project 2019. We wanted um, to have an international conference in November 2020 related to concert series and master classes. 
but we didn't know that much about uh, the complex history of harmonia. So this was the first step. Uh, the conference took place in November 2019 with quite a list of experts from all over Europe and the United States and um, we thought, okay, good, but what if um, we use um, our instruments uh, for teaching because we are mostly a teaching institution. So we uh, devise two courses during the first semester of 2020. Uh, History of Building Technology of Musical Instruments uh, that is taken by the students in conservation and restoration of musical instruments and the general conservation and restoration of musical instruments for the master students in musicology. And then we said, well, why don't we try to have a temporary exhibition on the harmonium? Since um, it was so important uh, in, at a certain um, amount of time. And here you see uh, Paul Gauguin uh, playing the harmonium in a very sophisticated manner at the Musha uh, studio. So the idea was to have a temporary um, exhibition that was called Expression, Le Tante Vite del Armonio, uh, Expressions, The Many Lives of the Armonio. So that took some um, steps. We had to transform our gallery rooms. Three quarters of the collection had to go in storage. We had to have a wish list and to transfer it to reality, um, have a affordable uh, group of instruments that were representative of the different kinds of uh, the evolution of the harmonium. Uh, and all these activities were done during the teaching uh, part. Uh, so I would enter the classroom and say, oh, okay, we have to do something about the harmonium. What do you know about the harmonium? How do you know to put together and um, request uh, for loaning an instrument, how you go with insurance, how you prepare a condition report, uh, how we deal with transportation, what about security? Most important, we had to create the narrative. So um, our students and my colleagues uh, were involved in a research um, moment in the writing of the text and also in the graphic rendition. Um, some of the instruments on loan were from private collectors and we had to take care of them. So we installed, thanks to our uh, teaching course in conservation and restoration, uh, a conservation workshop and the photographic workshop cabinet on site. Uh, all the building was shut down for uh, about one month before the exhibition so that we could um, work on that. Um, we wanted to study the instruments because it was a great opportunity. So we uh, started a campaign for instrument documentation and um, that was the first step towards an online catalog. Then of course we have to set up the exhibition and um, last but not least our department closes uh, on Friday uh, for the weekend. Uh, we have to find a way uh, for uh, managing and um, instructing students and volunteers in order to let it possible to visit the exhibition from Tuesdays to Sundays for two months. This is the instrument list uh, that you will also find in the printed catalog that we are working on. Uh, right now and hopefully it will be out in October, November 2021. Uh, we had quite an impressive collection of instruments uh, from the French school, from uh, German uh, and North European tradition, we have uh, reed organs, we have Italian organs and we had other keyboard instruments that are related to the harmonium. Uh, the piece of honor uh, was one of the few regards by Jean-Baptiste Micot, 
that uh, stood in the center of our um, exhibition and the Heckel 1820s uh, Fisarmonica. Uh, but uh, we also wanted to um, explain how we read work. So uh, not only read organs, but mouth organs and uh, Jews arps and concertinas and um, other um, musical instruments related to that. Um, what about the exhibition plan? This is the structure of our building. We had seven rooms at our disposal, so we uh, think that the best is to start with the area where people could see uh, the background of the exhibition, how we did the restoration, how we took care of the instruments, what kind of photographies we did. So uh, there was um, the first step. Then this was the giant's room. We have our 1905 Stanway that was facing a list free keyboard and pedal um, organ, uh, read organ. Unfortunately, we were not able to move uh, up the stairs um, this giant, so we have to renounce um, this little instrument. And we had a, an Italian um, church uh, harmonium instead. The second um, room was dedicated to Italian instruments, to the Indian harmonium tradition. Uh, it's funny how the harmonium traveled back and forth, continent, and change is um, features according to um, the different um, ethnic groups that uh, were using it, and other reed instruments. Uh, there was also a conference going on uh, during the exhibition, so we had the main, uh, the Aula Magna, uh, dotated with a, a wonderful player that was dialoguing with um, a Alexandre Effie, 1860 Harmonium de Salon, and another Alexandre uh, that was placed here, you see, you see the picture later. The main uh, part of the exhibition was devoted to German and Scandinavia and France uh, with some uh, idea of placing the harmonium not in the church but in a salon, in a parlor, in a place where it could be in context with other instruments. Then we have the mechanic and piano rolls um, room uh, where we put some uh, other uh, reed organs that are activated by cylinders. Uh, we use these color corridors for um, telling some other stories. For instance, how the um, cinematic and movie um, industry took the um, harmonium as an icon uh, for um, several movies uh, from uh, Viridiana by Bunuel to some other uh, Japanese guy. And thanks to the fact that we are working in a department um, where we are 12 musicologists and we have also history of cinema and other artistic uh, subject, we were able to get uh, to work together and to create a transdisciplinary event around this instrument. The last um, part of the exhibition was devoted to North America with, of course, reed organs and the end of the story. Uh, Hammond, the Model B, um, when uh, electronic instruments came into use, that was the end of the harmonium. Uh, in this room, it was also um, possible to sit and look at the projection of several chunks of videos about the history of the harmonium. Preparation. We received the instruments, we had to take care of them, we had to go and transport them thanks to uh, some guys that might be familiar to you because some of them um, came to Amis uh, during the last years. We documented it, we prepared instruments for the exhibition and then we started setting up the thing. Uh, 
uh, and here you have uh, the player you might uh, recognize um, that his twin uh, is sitting at the Cité de la Musique. It's the extra long 270 centimeters um, instrument uh, player uh, built only free and we know that only two um, are still uh, existing. What about the narratives? We had to find a way to uh, instruct people about the history of their monument and to um, enhance their curiosity because when you ask somebody what do you know about your monument? Well, it's something that is related to church and it's a surrogate of the organ. Well, that's part of the story, as you might know. So um, the texts of the panels uh, were written mostly by uh, my students and uh, my co-curator, Donatella Milini, and we tried to make them as uh, simple and attractive as possible. Um, please bear in mind that everything was auto-produced. Of course, for non-Italian uh, speakers, um, there were QR codes uh, and you were able to read your uh, translation uh, on your iPhone. We also had the same system. Every instrument had a QR code so you were able to see on your tablet the uh, catalog entry for, and photographs uh, for the instruments. So we try to um, take different perspectives. For instance, the men and women who build the instruments or the combination of several instruments. This part of the, of the exhibition is something that I like very much. The harmonium, the folding harmonium went to battle, went to war. And we were, were able to collect other instruments that took part in the First World War. Uh, and they are all related to the Zelle Lager. This violin was played by an, uh, an official, an Italian official. Uh, this is this diary. Um, that little ocarina is made of the clay outside the barracks. So a very humble instrument can tell stories that are um, touching and that um, let the visit or uh, imagine so much more than the physical object. This is a glimpse of the Odeon online catalog. You can go to the address and you will see uh, many details, photos of all the instruments and an extended description. That is the base for our um, for our work. Uh, these uh, people are just uh, a limited number of the students and colleagues uh, in the faculty who made possible uh, this, um, this exhibition. And you see the face of the new um, vice chancellor and the mayor when they we open the door the, the vice chancellor just uh, visited the, the, the same building uh, a couple of uh, months before and he saw something completely different something completely transformed that was the part of the Italian organ of organs when we uh, tell the story of the uh, harmonium and their surrogate. Here you can see our Pleyel and the two Alexandre. This is the main building. And now a short video that represents uh, a sort of virtual tour.
So during these exhibitions, we had almost 800 visitors. That for our collection is a great hit. Unfortunately, a couple of days after the COVID uh, broke out and everything was paralyzed. But we are not um, the morning and we will uh, publish the catalog, as I said, uh, in the printed version. And this is the very last um, panel that has to do with North America. Uh, really, the Art Monument and the Reed Organ is a representative of the consumer culture in Victorian American, as um, in the book of Dennis Waring. Uh, we are discussing uh, so often if a musical instrument can have a double life, a second life uh, within a museum, staying silent, uh, without that tactile and physical um, relationship with the people who played it and owned them, who, put, who created spaces in their home for uh, making music. Well, uh, we try to uh, suggest that an harmonium is still an harmonium, even if it becomes a writing desk, because it's still able to tell the story, many, many stories of its many lives. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed it.